So we are here and we are the Italian League for the fight against ADS and we are here with uh, Evan Wood who is uh, the chair of the Vienna Declaration Writing Committee. So Mr. Wood, uh, where the Vienna Declaration comes from? Yeah. Um, well, in 2000, I was at the uh, Durban International AIDS Conference when there was the Durban Declaration that HIV is the cause of AIDS. And uh, I'm a physician, and I was working very late one night, uh, frustrated uh, about uh, all the drug users that were in the emergency room. And uh, uh, my interest is HIV medicine, and I've been very frustrated with uh, conventional drug policies which lead to all of these harms and uh, I started thinking you know the Durban declaration said that HIV is the cause of AIDS which we know to be a scientific fact and I think we also know it to be a scientific fact that the war on drugs does not achieve its stated objectives and it leads to all sorts of harms and I thought well the meetings being held in Vienna that's where the Commission on, on narcotic drugs is being held the meetings being held here because of that it's the gateway to Eastern Europe uh, it's where the, the United Nations sort of infrastructure to maintain the war on drugs is. And uh, so this idea for the Vienna Declaration was born, and a large number of people have helped contribute to that over time. Uh, as you probably know, the writing committee includes uh, my colleague Julio Montaner, who's the president of the International AIDS Society, Michelle Kazachkin, the head of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria, uh, Francois Barry Sanusi, who won the 2008 Nobel Prize uh, for uh, Medicine. She's one of the co-discoverers of HIV. So a very uh, high-level scientific group was brought together and as you probably know, it's now been endorsed by uh, over, I think, 13,000 people, uh, leaders in science and medicine, five Nobel Prize winners, uh, including, uh, you know, former presidents. The former presidents of Mexico, uh, Brazil, Colombia have all endorsed the declaration. Very high-level organizations and individuals within the United Nations system former law enforcement officials like the former Seattle police chief, uh, people like that are all coming forward to endorse the declaration. Somebody says no. Why? You know, there haven't been very many people saying no, which is incredible. I think that's partly because at a conference like this of scientists and activists that have all seen the, the harms of the war on drugs, um, you know, there's, there's not that many people that would be opposed. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of support for the war on drugs because uh, many people aren't educated. They don't know that the purity of drugs is going up and that the price is going down and that young people have easier access to drugs than alcohol and tobacco. So they think they're doing something good and they don't understand. Um, but there's also uh, uh, an invested interest in the war on drugs uh, in the United States. Um, there's more money spent on incarceration in the state of California than there is in post-secondary education. And the prison industry has been privatized. So they have lobby groups in Washington, D.C. And, and that are lobbying congressmen and other things trying to maintain the status quo. So uh, there are interest groups that, that continue to promote this way of thinking. Um, and there's people among the public that just don't understand. So the hope is that the Vienna Declaration will be taken back to Italy, to city councillors in Italy, to mayors in Italy, to presidents and, and prime ministers, and, and, and really trying to educate politicians and the public that we're wasting all our money if we're, if we're chasing people around and trying to lock them up. HIV is spreading because of that, hepatitis C, tuberculosis, all these other harms. Uh, and, and if we were investing this money elsewhere, um, we could be doing so much more. Um, just, just as an example, the United States has spent an estimated $2.5 trillion on the war on drugs. Can you imagine if that was invested into education, addiction treatment, and health? Inner city America would be very, very different. So... so um how can we support the Vienna Declaration, uh, we in Italy, I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the, we only had two weeks before the conference to try and gather okay. signatures. Uh, we're very happy with the high level of support that we've received with, again, about 13,000 people and leaders in science and medicine and, I should say, hundreds of, of organizations as well that have endorsed... Uh, you know, representing hundreds of thousands of constituents and members of those hundreds of organizations. Um, now is the time, I think, really 
to take it and, and educate with it. And, and uh, we're going to be creating tools and other things on the website to try and um, make this accessible to people so that they can start to learn about this. What about the United Nations? It seems that there are two different positions reading the Vienna Declaration. Yeah. Well, there's two, there's two different positions within the United Nations. Uh, you have the International Narcotics Control Board, which is very rigid and trying to uh, make sure countries adhere to the international conventions, and they don't care about human rights abuses, they don't care about HIV AIDS, they don't care about health, they don't care about prisons, they don't care about all the unintended consequences. They're just rigidly focused on a legal interpretation of those conventions, and then it's very uh, duplistic because then you have... UN AIDS, you have the World Health Organization and these other groups that are advocating for harm reduction. Um, but to be honest, to be totally frankly honest, UN AIDS and WHO and those groups, they need to do more and they need to take a stronger position and they need to, the United Nations together needs to speak with one voice about these issues and that voice should be guided by science and evidence and not ideology and that's really what the Vienna Declaration is calling for. Mr. Bodi, in the Vienna Declaration, uh, um, you, talks about, uh, uh, you talk about Portugal. Can you yeah. tell us something more? Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm not an exper expert in Portugal coming from Canada, but I have read the reports coming out of Portugal where over 10 years ago now, Portugal decriminalized all drugs. And in the scientific and public health community, uh, people like myself were, you know, thinking, well, this will be an interesting experiment. Will there be drug tourism in Portugal? Will there be increased drug use in, in Portugal? And what's very interesting is that the HIV rate in Portugal has gone down. There's less people dying from overdoses uh, and uh, there's more people getting into addiction treatment and it hasn't led to this increase in drug use and the contrary has actually been observed. Portugal, if you even look at, at cannabis, it has one of the lowest rates of cannabis use in the entire European Union. So um, certainly this, this idea that by focusing on drug use as a, a health issue will lead to more drug use is totally incompatible with, with the evidence that we have. Do harm reduction and uh, uh, decriminalization mean the same? Um, harm reduction is such a broad term, right? Uh, condoms are harm reduction. Seat belts are, con, uh, are, 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 are harm reduction. Harm reduction is, is, you know, if someone uses drugs less, that's harm reduction. If someone uses a clean needle, that's harm reduction. So, so it's, it's hard to, to place harm reduction besides decriminalization. But the opposite of decriminalization is criminalization. And we know that by criminalizing drug addicts, they are driven. Evidence versus ideology. It does exist an acceptable compromise. I mean, in Italy, we have harm reduction, but we don't have a safe injection room, for example, or condoms or needle exchange in prison. You know, I come at this from a sort of pragmatic scientific perspective and that not all decisions can be based on science. Uh, we, need, we need to come to consensus, but if something is known from a scientific perspective to benefit, then we should pursue that. And if it's known from a scientific to, uh, perspective to cause harm, then we should move away from that. And people say, oh, well, drugs is a moral issue, but people dying is a moral issue of missing opportunities to save lives is a moral issue. So the moral ideological issue should support reform. Uh, it shouldn't be a reason to you know, continue to waste taxpayers' dollars and result in all sorts of other harms. So thanks a lot, okay. Mr. Okay. Wood, for so this interview and for the Vienna Declaration. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so much.